dirty wild black hair who, rag round his midriff and water pot in hand, stopped in mid-street, turned round and gazed up at the balconies, windows, shops, and city stagery filled with glum activity. Seeking after that sweet golden climb. Everyone wants to know what he was looking for when he went to India. And they asked that thinking that the answer is he was going there for enlightenment. I think the search for enlightenment was a small part of it. But he was also looking for drugs and boys, uh -huh. uh, and thrills, and sensations, and uh, different things to eat. That's not enlightenment, or? <laughs> <laughs> Conch blows from the rooftop. Monks in maroon chant grim glance. And a boy who plays leader makes all the bows. Tara, cross-legged, head tilted, smiling, hands shaping the mudra, the giving, red body, gold body, green, a puja, a potluck, for the whole Himalayan plateau. When I was in university in Bombay in 1962, when Ginsberg came, we all knew how. So we were incredibly excited when these people started coming to India. Gary Snyder writing to Allen Ginsberg, Indian intellectuals are square, filled with patriotism and anticipation of progress, but with only vague ideas of spiritual values. So you have this class in all these countries, China and India, the middle class uh, who want to embrace the West or what they think the West has to offer to them in, by way of science and democracy and all of this other stuff, Indian religion, Indian philosophy is, is seen by them as a tremendous drag. What an entrance. Thousands and thousands of them clashing cymbals, ringing bells, playing flutes, wearing bright colors and weird clothes, singing, dancing. This caravanserai of libertine celebrants who were wiping away the proprieties of caste, race, and sex by sheer stoned incomprehension. <laughs> the seduction lay in the chaos. They thought they were simple. We thought they were neon. They thought we were profound. We knew we were provincial. Everybody thought everybody else was ridiculously exotic. And everybody got it wrong. When he returned from India, he immediately started teaching me these mudras. Haryom namo shivaya. Haryom namo shivaya. He ta taught us all these mantras that we sang during the rest of the 60s. And also, of course, the Om. Alan at uh, the Chicago uh, police riots in 1968 overwhelmed. And he was the only great poet in the history of world culture that had omic laryngitis uh, from overwhelming. Millions of wild eyed Americans turned their backs on all that amazing equipment <laughs> and pointed at us, screaming, You guys, you've got it. So we tagged along with the Americans one more time. Not because of right thought, right speech, right action, but because of the rhythm section. <laughs> ne never before had the void been pursued with such optimism and such razzle-dazzle. Everyone suspected that whatever America wanted, America got. Why not Nirvana? <laughs> He went there to find everything. And I think that he came away not being enlightened, but being a better human being. Read September on Jessore Road. No one talks about it very much because it was later in his life, but that particular poem will teach you so much about humanity. By the well wall of the world. What I did.